You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome back to another friendly episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you for joining us. So glad that you've done so. Looking forward to a good 2021. Hope you are uh, ready to rock and roll. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the shows that we should do coming up is talking about how to prepare for 21. What can you do right now to put yourself in a better position to take advantage, not take advantage, but take advantage of opportunities and to ensure that you are uh, prepared to help clients when they need you? Absolutely. We're seeing more and more clients like, hey, I need to fly right here next week. And the FAA and... Their old geriatric ways are like, but that means I gotta go on a computer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, you guys can't help yourself. No, no, I couldn't. No, I couldn't. Uh, but hey, two weeks to get uh, authorization sometimes is just too long. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not how the world of business works. True. Um, and also, convenience and speed means everything in, in economics. So, that being said, long story short is we're seeing people take uh, additional precautions, and uh, we're going to talk about that. But today, we have a very interesting question uh, that's really focused on, okay, you've crashed, but you've crashed your drone in the woods. It's not easily walkable. Uh, it's not easy to get to. What do you do? And I know many of you are like, well, duh. <laughs> but many of, many of us are actually like, well, huh, there might be more to the story here. There always is. There always is. Objectivity, objectivity, right. objectivity. We got to think it through. That's right. That's right. Just like at Bishop Ireton, they taught us, you got to be able to ar argue both sides of the coin in order to really understand where the coin comes from. Absolutely. So, so that being said, that brings us to our sponsor today, uh, before we play the question, which is, that's right, our friends at Logic Labs. If you're like me, if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to cultivate intelligence, learn about new tools and resources to scale your business, but just get them in tidbits, and you also want to problem solve, and you want to learn from other peers who are entrepreneurs, that way, when you solve problems, you're getting objective information driven from experience. If you're like me, you want to cultivate intelligence, then join us for the Modern Mastermind starting next quarter in 21. You can join us at logiclabs.education. Hey guys. So unfortunately, I, well, I had my first crash. I, I clipped a tree branch and my Mavic Air 2 went down um, in a canyon and I was unable to recover it that same day because I was losing sunlight and the temperature was dropping pretty quickly. So I'm planning on going back and trying to recover the drone later this week. But is there anything I should be doing or that I could be doing between now and then? And what is kind of like the procedure in if you lose a drone, what are you supposed to do? All right. So the context that we're going to work with here. <laughs> well, let's just say that we have a good friend who recently experienced this, and he's not alone. I've actually heard of four or five people doing the same thing in the last week. Yeah. And it, it's, wow. nor it's normal because it's Christmas. People are getting drones, and they don't know what they don't know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it's so, that simple. <laughs> yeah, and so what's happening is a lot of folks live in close to wilderness, and they're getting out. And, th and seemingly a lot of folks think, hey, I'm going to go out in the middle of nowhere where there's nobody, which is smart. That's a good place to go learn and fly and That's right. get some cool footage and uh, try to become a better pilot with nobody around. But then the drone goes down mm. and a couple things can happen. One is you have no idea where it went down. That does happen. Who knows? Maybe, you know, you're a new pilot and orientation got messed up. And once that thing gets too far, even though you're supposed to stay line of sight at this point still, uh, it got a little further than you planned. And so you couldn't see it and you lost it and you're not exactly sure where it is. And then you thought you were bringing it home, but you weren't. You were making it go further out. <laughs> so we've seen that before. <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff <laughs> might be happening. And so you don't know where it went down. You just know that it did. Yeah. Or maybe it went somewhere where you know where it is, but it's almost impossible to get to. Let's so then that's the important part of that statement is that it's 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 almost impossible to get to. And and I want to hit that, but before we get there, you said something I want to hit on and I didn't even think about this in pre-show. But how do you know where the drone is? 
There's two things you can do. Bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you can click on that little map, and it's going to show you where the drone is because the drone is shown in that red uh, mm -hmm. triangle. Mm -hmm. The second thing that you can do is top right corner of your app, hit those three dots, and then... I think it's in the I think it's in the bottom menu under advanced you can click turn on ESC beeping. Okay. Why is that a big deal? As we learned at a training in Seattle, Washington with the DJI instructors, um, one of their people had flown a drone and crashed it because they weren't looking at, oh yeah, that's right, battery voltage. And so what happened is he couldn't find the drone, poor guy, he's actually a really nice guy, um, couldn't find the drone. And I was like, well, why don't you turn on ESC beeping and then just walk to the drone? And that's what he did. And all of a sudden, boop. Hmm. Boop. And he just started, you know, walking towards it and he found it. So don't forget, if you do lose your drone, there are two ways to find it. But let's go back, Rob. We lost our drone in a place that might be difficult to get to. And we could even add dangerous to get to. Or maybe even unknown to get to. Okay. Like maybe there's a canyon below you and you're not really quite sure how to walk there. Exactly. Or maybe, I don't know, it's going to take you a day and a half. I mean, <laughs> there's, all, <laughs> there's all sorts of scenarios that we can paint that bottom lines suggest we need to figure out if it is important that we spend whatever energy or time or whatever risk to go get the drone. A hundred percent. And I mean, in one particular friend's example, it was too uh, late in the day to be able to go down to that area and safely get back up yeah, without you don't light. Yeah, a, a SAR team to have to come out and find you finding Ex the drone. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I think that, that was a very wise decision to say, mm, okay, definitely lost the drone. I definitely have a responsibility to pick up said drone, but right now may not be the smartest time to go pick up said drone, which kind of brings us to, is there a responsibility? Is there a hazard? If you are flying your drone in the forest, national wilderness, whatever, let's say you, you experience a crash, a flyaway, whatever. Are you responsible as the pilot to go get the drone? Yeah. So what are the risks if you don't? Well, I think the risks are, what if the drone uh, catches on fire and starts a wildfire? Because these are lithium batteries. They are very volatile. You know, what happens if uh, an animal gets into it and kills themselves? I don't know. That's 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 a rare one. I'm kind of thinking like Final Destination <laughs> here. <laughs> the bear claws the drone and woof. <laughs> I think... <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, that's knows? a farce. Okay, um, that's a little extreme. Some coyote, coyote or wolf eats it, and I don't know, and uh, has like nuclear children. Hills have eyes becomes real. What? Well, yeah, something. But I think the main point is is the battery an issue out there in the forest all by itself? So I'm gonna make the argument that even though the FAA uh, they say that you are ultimately responsible, I think that that ideology transcends here into for service because in my opinion you are responsible for picking up that aircraft because in itself it is carrying hazardous materials not technically speaking as far as legalese but the fact that your battery has lithium in it it can cause damage to the ground groundwater etc i think you have a responsibility if you crash a drone to go get it all right. So if it's possible to go get again, if we're in that scenario where it's too late in the day, we don't have enough time. Yeah. Don't go get it right then. Go the next day. Because as Rob said, you don't want to be the cause of a SAR operation. Yeah, exactly. And the, the groundwater thing probably is not going to make me. <laughs> that's probably not a lot of risk there. Yeah, but I know. I'm just the... <laughs> trying to cover the wide gamut of yeah. Internet trolls here. <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> but as far as the battery, what is the real risk of it starting a fire? What's going to um, ignite the battery? It's just the sun beating down on no. it? Well, what? in one member's case from 2016... Uh, in the back of his pickup truck I through Las that. Vegas. There were a couple of instances of, uh, of, yeah, there's been several actually. If the batteries overheat and they do have a charge, 100% they're going to light on fire. And the thing is, is that the fire is so hot, um, water's not going to put it out. You need a chemical retardant in order to put it out. But also it's so hot that it burns literally higher than the temperature at which aluminum melts. Hmm. 
So it's really, really, really important that, in my opinion, you go get the drone. Now, does it matter the size of the drone? Because if we're talking the Mini 2 and we pull oh, this battery answer. out... So hold on, there's one thing that you mentioned here. What's the real danger, right? The danger is the battery would have to be punctured and have a charge. Okay. So if that battery were to burn up in your pocket, you would have third degree burns up and down your legs. In my pocket, sure. But in the middle of the forest, what is this thing really going to do? Honestly, I am not a forensic investigator for <laughs> fires. Uh, what is it? Arson investigator? Excuse arson me. Investigator. So I don't think I really have the wherewithal to answer that question hmm. with any sort of value. <laughs> <laughs> Comments, please. <laughs> but uh, the common sense in me says if yeah. this lights at 1200 degrees and it lights a tree on fire, other trees are going to light on fire as well. True. And if I exacerbate that example, now we have a wildfire. And there have been things that are much simpler than a battery that have started severe wildfires. That's true. That's you know, very true. Like a gender reveal. Uh, you don't remember that? No. A gender reveal started a 200,000 200, acre fire in California this year. That's unfortunate. It is. Could have just gender revealed on the beach, you dummies. <laughs> yeah, on, on YouTube or whatever. Uh, anyway. Um, at your house. But Any, if anyways. you're playing devil's advocate and if Peter were here, he would be like, but Paul, if the battery is left on, it's going to be discharged. And if there is no charge, there really is no danger. Uh, there's still a little bit of danger, but I think you still have a responsibility to not leave trash in the forest. There is that. <laughs> and you're talking several hundred dollars, so there's always that reason to go get the drone, right? And sometimes you always want to go get the drone, and you can't. Like, if it has epic yeah. footage on it, you know? There you go. Or if it's under 200 feet of water. I don't know. <laughs> 404 page. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've wanted to go I get that one. I know what you were talking about. Yeah. And also Trip for- Trip to Canada time. <laughs> That lake was supposed to, like, lose its water that year, and then it was, like, all-time high. <laughs> that drone is still there. That drone has got such incredible footage on it. Um, smoky wildfire wilderness sunset footage. Anyway. Uh, oh, well. If you lose a drone, if you crash a drone, it is not the end of the world. Do not let it hurt your confidence. Use it as a lesson, as a lesson to maybe it's time to learn more about flying before you just go all honky donky on the thing. Look, Maverick, you didn't go to Top Gun and uh, this is your first uh, aircraft. So take it seriously. That way you don't have these embarrassing moments for your friends. But sometimes they can also be humbling moments, which is a great thing for all of us, myself included. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Hum Humility is good. That's what, all I got, Rob. All right. Well, there you go. So I think you go pick the thing up. Okay. If it's a serious danger where you don't have enough time to go get it, obviously you need to use your common sense because you don't want to become the reason for further operations in that area to pick things up. That's right. So, but yeah, like you said, I think that's the point. Common sense. For sure. Anyway, thanks for joining us as always. To my uh, four friends who crashed this week, I'm sorry for using you guys as the example. I was trying to eliminate names. And uh, I'm grateful for all of you because I think all of you are handling this so well. And uh, props to all you guys. Literally. Props. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs>